गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल इंग्लिश लिटरेचर टूडे वी आर हियर विथ सेक्सरस अनादर ड्रामा रोमांटिक कॉमेडी एज यू लाइक इट यू कैन कॉल इट पैस्टरल कॉमेडी बिकॉज द सेटिंग ऑफ दिस प्ले इज इन फॉरेस्ट ऑफ आर्डन ए पैस्टरल सेटिंग ओके सोर्सेस टॉमस लॉज पोस्टल रोजालेंड इज अ सोर्स ऑफ दिस प्ले एज यू लाइक इट and the heroine of the novel play sorry that is rosalind the spelling is quite different but the pronunciation is same now written in 1599 and most probably performed in 1603 date of publication 1623 in the first folio setting the french court and forest of arden now we will have a look at the character list at first the major characters He is Duke Senior. He is the elder brother of Duke Frederick. He is the rightful duke, but his brother has banished him to the forest of Arden, usurping his power and land. And this is the culprit, Duke Frederick. He is the evil usurper of the dukedom who has banished his brother, Duke Senior, and taken over his land. He also banishes Duke Senior's daughter Rosalind, but not along with him. Rosalind will be banished later. Next character, he is Oliver, eldest oldest son of Sir Ronald de Boys. He hates his younger brother Ronaldo. So as the story is rolling on, we find the family rivalry, brother against brother. This became the central theme of this play, brother. against brother in every strata of society not in the dukedom but also in the common people among the common people he hates his younger brother orlando he is portrayed as selfish and brutally wicked later in this play he turns from himself and loses that wickedness when orlando his brother saves him and this carefree guy is orlando he is the youngest son of sir ronaldo boys People like him, but his brother Oliver mistreats him and plans to kill him. He takes refuge in the forest of Arden. Now this person is generous Adam. He is the servant to Oliver, yet he is well aware of his master's wickedness. He warns Orlando about his brother's wicked plans. He gives Orlando all his savings to live on in the forest. and goes with orlando to the forest and loyally serves him now this is touchstone he is the court clown he goes to the forest with rosalind and celia this is our heroine rosalind rosalind is a daughter of duke senior she is bold and smart she is witty and throughout this play we will uh, find her wits her intelligence the most interesting part of uh, her character uh, of her wit you can say i find when she talks about time how time passes at a slow pace for a young ma- maiden between the day of her betrothal and the day of which of her marriage and how time passes for a lover and how time passes in a leisurely manner for the priest who does not know the latin language and so also with a rich man who does not suffer from gout so the, both of them can sleep very easily without any problem so this type of talking proves the intelligence in the part of the character of the rosalind now she is intensely in love with orlando and when she goes in the forest of arden she disguises herself as ganymede disguise 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 everywhere in shakespeare almost all of shakespeare's no, um, drama you will find this word disguise this theme of disguise now next character is celia celia is the daughter of duke frederick and the cousin and close friend of rosalind celia is not like her father selfish she is not selfish she is very very beautiful girl with a very good heart she loves rosalind to the extent that she accompanies her into the forest when she is banished and in the forest of arden celia disguises herself as alina so you have to remember this point the name of rosalind as ganymede rosalind take the disguise of a boy 
Rosalind also changes her gender. But Celia is a young maiden named Elena. Now, minor characters. So, Oliver Matrix, a vicar from the next village. Dennis, servant to Oliver. Corin, he's a shepherd. He's very humble and you have to remember Corin because when Rosalind and Celia first arrive in the forest of Aden, this is Corin who helps them. Sylvia, he's a shepherd. He's madly in love with Phoebe. So Sylvia loves Phoebe but Phoebe loves Ganymede. Who is Ganymede? Ganymede is actually Rosalind. So there is some love tangle you will find later. William is a countryman. He loves Audrey, but Audrey loves Tustone. Tustone loves Audrey. Oh my god. Now Phoebe, Phoebe is a shepherdess. She is quoted by Sylvia's. And though she has no interest in him, she rather loves Ganymede. Okay. Audrey, she is an ignorant country girl. She cannot understand all of what Tustone said, but she wants to marry Tustone. Hyman. Hymen is a Greek god of marriage who appears at the very end of the play to marry all the couples. Jax de Bois, he is the second son of Sir Ronald de Bois. So Sir Ronald de Bois, you have found his name in time of major characters. Sir Ronald de Bois has three sons. Number one, Oliver. Number two, second, Jax. In Shakespeare's times, it is called Jacquees. And number three, our hero, Orlando. Now, Jacquees so or Jax, he is a melancholy, this is not Jax the boys, it is another Jax. He is a melancholy lord attending Duke Senior in his banishment. He affected, his affected mannerisms and misanthropic speech make him an object of birth, object of ridicule. Now, this Jax is very important. Jax is important in the sense for his famous speech, seven ages of man and my friends i have made another video on these seven ages of man because i think it is very very important seven ages of man though no one likes jacks everyone ridicules jacks but jacks famous monologue on seven ages of man is the most significant and most powerful uh, speech in Shakespearean canon you can say Amiens is a lord attending Duke Senior in exile. Libu is a Duke Frederick's courtier. Charles is a powerful wrestler of Duke Frederick's court with whom Orlando gets entangled in a fight. Okay. Now, after the characters, we will have a look at the chronological synopsis of the play. <laughs> Here is an excerpt from Act 2, Scene 1. Duke Senior, who is now in the forest of Aden, by, uh, banished by his brother, he is addressing his subjects who have gone with him. Now my co-mates and brothers in exile, hath not old custom made this life more sweet than that of printed, painted pomp? Painted pomp means artificiality of the court. Art not these woods more free from peril than the envious court? So here in this line we find that theme that we are going to discuss later. The theme that is fortune versus nature. City versus country. Here feel we not the penalty of Adam. What is the penalty of Adam? Do you know who it is Adam? Adam is our forefather. Adam was the first man by God. And when Adam disobeyed God, what happened? What they did, Adam and if they have eaten the fruit of knowledge, that is an apple. An apple and so much cows. Anyway, when Adam and his female companion Eve were they eaten the fruit of knowledge apple. They are expelled from the garden of Eden or from paradise. Now, in here it is forest of Eden and it, that was garden of Eden. In garden of Eden, there was eternal spring. 
दे एंजॉय द ब्लेसिंग ऑफ इटर्नल स्प्रिंग बट आफ्टर देयर बैनिशमेंट देयर एक्सपल्सन फ्रॉम देयर दे हैड टू सफर द एफ्लिक्शन द चेंज ऑफ सीजन समर हॉट समर बीटिंग क्विंटर सो इन द फॉरेस्ट ऑफ आर्डन दे हैव टू फिल दैट पेनाल्टी ऑफ आडम पेनाल्टी ऑफ आडम दैट चेंज ऑफ सीजन रेफर्स टू चेंज ऑफ सीजन इन द कोर्ट वर्ड वी फाइन इन द कोर्ट इन ड्यूक्स कोर्ट देयर इज कम्फोर्ट दे हैव टू एक्सपीरियंस कम्फोर्ट बट हियर इन दिस फॉरेस्ट दे हैव टू फेस द रिगोरस क्लाइमेट चेंज दे हैव टू एक्सपीरियंस ऑल दैट कोल्ड दैट हॉट एवरी टाइप ऑफ क्लाइमेटिक चेंज इन कॉन्ट्रेस्ट टू द कम्फोर्ट्स विच दे एंजॉयड इन द कोर्ट बट नाउ दे आर ड्राइव एन आउट बाई ड्यूक फेडरिक सो द सीजन्स डिफरेंस एज द आई सी फैंग द चार्लीज चाइडिंग ऑफ विंटर स्विंग हुई हुन इट बाइट्स एंड ब्लोज अपन माई बॉडी इवेंट टिल आई स्विंग विथ कोल्ड आई स्माइल एंड से दिस इज नो फ्लैटरी दीज आर काउंसिलर्स सो स्वीट आर दोज एडवर्सिटी द फेमस लाइन स्वीट आर द यूजेस ऑफ एडवर्सिटी वाट इज ड्यूक्स इन एस सेंग सॉरी ड्यूक्स इन इज सेंग दैट दो ही आर इन दिस फॉरेस्ट ऑफ आर्डन वी आर फेसिंग द सीजन्स डिफरेंस द पेनाल्टी ऑफ आर्डम इन कॉन्ट्रास्ट टू द कम्फोर्ट दैट वी एंजॉयड अर्लियर येट इवन आई स्विंग विथ कोल ए स्माइल बिकॉज देर इज नो फ्लैटरी सो स्वीट आर द यूजेस ऑफ एडवर्सिटी इवन एडवर्सिटी हैज इट्स ओन बेनिफिट दैट ही वॉन्ट्स टू मीन हुईच लाइक द टोड अगली एंड वेनोमस वर्स येट ए प्रेसियस जुएल इन इट्स हेड ओके एंड दिस आवर लाइफ एक्सम्ड फ्रॉम पब्लिक हॉन्ट फाइंड स्टांग इन ट्रीज बुक्स इन द रनिंग ब्रुक्स sermons in stones and good in everything so this is the utopia here everything is good in spite of so much adversities so here duke senior emphasizes the beneficial side of his life in forest and he at the same time he tries to convince his comrades that there is every reason for them to appreciate their life here don't be sad like the sting of a toad life's misfortune are also painful but the jewel in the head of a toad those misfortune just like the jewel in the head of a toad this misfortune also bring many benefits to human life so you must think about the good side of this misfortune don't be sad don't be depressed so now this scenario is just okay for us and we can proceed the play starts with the speech of orlando who is orlando the third child of ronaldo boys at the very beginning of the play orlando is talking with adam who is adam the old servant orlando is saying that um, Orlando is accusing about his brother Oliver who is depriving Orlando from his rights. Oliver is keeping him at home and did not provide uh, any education any ma- any scope for development in his life these types of thing. Now Oliver arrives at the scene and a bitter fight takes place between the two brothers. Adam parts the fighting brothers and Oliver coldly promises to give Orlando his due. But it was not Oliver's plan, but as they were fighting and Orlando was in the better side, Oliver was forced to promise. But what he was thinking was in his head and that we will find later. Now, if the scene shift to Charles, Charles the wrestler informs us, informs actually Oliver and also along with Oliver us the reader about the court's news that duke senior has been banished by his brother duke frederick but 
old duke's daughter rosaline is staying in the court as frederick's daughter celia loves her cousin very much now oliver makes plan to have his brother killed by the duke's wrestler charles he convinces charles that orlando is plotting against him and that orlando should be killed now as the match the next day at the match the duke frederick his daughter celia and his niece rosaline they all gathered and watched charles and orlando wrestling before the match rosaline and celia met oliver and warned him but orlando does not listen to them and <coughs> uh, his determination other is increased when two beautiful court girls beautiful ladies from court entreats him so he became he becomes more determined now orlando with great speed and agility defeats charles celia and rosaline congratulate orlando rosaline falls in love with orlando and orlando returns her feelings love at first sight duke frederick accuses rosaline of plotting against him now till now duke frederick allows rosaline to live in the palace with Uh, his own daughter Celia, but suddenly his mind go frantic, and he accuses Rosalind of plotting against him. And despite Celia's pleas for her cousin, he banishes Rosalind. Now Celia decides to go into exile with her cousin. Next, the girls set out for the forest of Arden. Rosalind disguised as a young man, Ganymede. and celia disguised as a young country lass alena very very important you have to keep in mind touchstone the court's clown accompanies them so this is alena and this is ganymede actually rosalind like to brother and sister to siblings they go out from the court Meanwhile Orlando returns home and is warned by the faithful Adam that Oliver is plotting to kill him together they decide to set out for the forest of Arden hoping that they will be safe there this is forest of Arden just imagine now Frederick assumes that Orlando is responsible for his daughter Celia's disappearance and in a rage he sends for oliver and commands him to find orlando in the forest orlando and adam join rosaline's exiled father and his men while rosaline and celia still in disguise purchase a little cottage and a small herd of sheep and settle down to a peaceful pastoral existence One day, however, Rosalind finds that the trees in the forest are all covered with sheets of poetry dedicated to her. These are all the trees, and these are the sheets of poetry written by Orlando for Rosalind. Rosalind meets the poet Orlando and tries to fathom his true love for her. Now, Rosalind is still in disguise, Ganymede, so Orlando cannot recognize Rosalind, but Rosalind can play with his emotions. and rosaline <coughs> rosaline promised orlando that uh, he uh, he now he or she what i will say she is ganymede so he is he and she is rosaline actually so she is she anyway pardon me now rosaline in the disguise of ganymede promises orlando that he will play she will play the role of rosaline for him rosaline is telling now tell me how long would you have her after you have possessed her this is one of the example of rosaline's brilliance of speech orlando forever and a day means forever eternally and an extra day so rosaline say say a day without the ever so rosaline say say a day don't that ever just omit that ever no no orlando may not april when they o december when they wed so this is the brilliance of rosaline Silvius a young shepherd falls in love with Phoebe a hard-hearted shepherdess but Phoebe rejects Silvius attention and falls in love with the young Ganymede 
but the young ganymede actually is rosaline so there is some triangle of entanglement of love sylvia's loves phoebe now phoebe loves ganymede ganymede who is actually a lady who is rosaline loves orlando here touchstone loves audrey william loves audrey audrey loves tuston so so many again there is another you will find or oliver will fall in love with celia so there are, are so many threads of love actually could say it is a romantic comedy so love love love, love all, all is here going on that chemistry of love now orlando saves his brother oliver now orlando is coming sorry oliver is coming the first of arden in search of orlando because duke frederick has threatened him that either you find orlando and find my daughter celia otherwise i'll do whatever i like so oliver is coming the first of arden in search of orlando and there he met there he meets with a venomous snake and a dangerous lion orlando saves his brother oliver from a snake and a lion now when ganymede hears that orlando is seriously injured she fainted because she is rosaline oliver and celia meet and fall in love at first sight i told you already oliver and celia all are falling in, in love at first sight oh my god and the jester tuston falls in love with a simple minded young woman named adri who tends a herd of goats duke frederick decides to journey to the forest himself now duke frederick finds that everyone has gone to the forest garden only he is only left for himself so duke frederick decides to journey to the forest garden now what will be happening in the court of france i don't know at the forest edge he meets an old religious hermit and is miraculously healed of his wicked nature now oliver is healed of his wicked nature when orlando his brother saves him here duke frederick also transform this frederick transforms on character find he also heal of his wicked nature by a saint rosaline still disguised as ganymede promises to solve the problem of everyone through magic how she setting her male attire suddenly appears as herself so every problem solved Rosaline and Orlando, Oliver and Celia, Sylvia and Phoebe are married. Rosaline's father, the rightful duke, is joyous at finding his daughter again, and Frederick's conversion is so complete that he renounces the world and he renounces the world everything and so Duke Senior takes his own place. At the end of the play, Rosaline comes forward and addresses the audience in a short but charming epilogue. in particular she talks to all the lovers in the audience and wishes them well you can read the epilogue from the book it is very interesting and witty now we'll have a look at the themes of the play family rivalry brother against brother i don't have to explain it i know you all know about this this drama is telling about this dick frederick versus senior duke senior here oliver versus orlando romantic love i have given so many example of romantic love here you will find only too many example so you can find this romantic love here fortune versus nature i have already discussed that is court life that is forest of arden court life versus forest of arden and and one side there is comfort but on the other side there is adam scars that is struggle adversities but duke senior is happy without his fortune 
and that is find in one of the courtier amiens you have find the names in minor characters she is saying happy is your grace that can translate the stubbornness of fortune into so quiet and so sweet a style so duke senior this character is the representative of nature he can ignore his fortune he can ignore his fortune and live in adversity welcoming it happily this guy is this is the uh, theme of every uh, shakespeare's every play transformation of character duke frederick he transform into a good person again oliver transform into a good person lavat's first sight everyone is falling at lavat's first sight so there is no need to explain that okay so with this today we finish six verse as you like it thank you